Hey guys, welcome to TFL Classics. I have such a cool video for you today because behind me are two Subarus that are 42 years apart. We've got the grandfather and the very latest Subaru four-wheel drive station wagon. That is a 1978 Subaru DL, one of the first four-wheel drive wagons you could buy here in the United States. And that evolved over the years to become the Outback. And that is the new sixth generation Outback, the 2020. And in this video, we are going to compare the two, see how much Subaru has changed in 42 years. And I've got a question for you. There are only two things that are similar between these cars. Can you guess what that is? Let me know in the comment section below. We're gonna start out with what's similar with the number one thing underneath the hood. This one might seem pretty obvious, but even from the founding of Subaru, the company has been using flat four-cylinder engines. And this is a pretty ancient example of one. This is a 1,600cc water-cooled carbureted flat four. And it's a boxer, which means, of course, horizontally opposed. So the pistons go like this in and out as it runs along. It's a, it's a really cool piece of technology, of course, Volkswagens in the 70s had boxer engines, but this one is absolutely tiny. You can see the actual engine is only about this big. It would probably fit in a carry-on if it absolutely had to, and it develops about 67 horsepower, 81 pound-feet of torque. This is also a little bit unique because back in the day, Subaru actually put their spare tire here on top of the transmission. Super easy to get to. It doesn't take up any space in the rear. It doesn't have to live underneath the vehicle and get punctured over rocks, so not a bad idea although it does get very hot as it drives along. Now, underneath the hood of the new one is also a boxer engine, but a little bit bigger. Still a four-cylinder. Of course, in 2020 now, it has fuel injection. Wow, that is so hot. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Holy cow. I don't know if I'll be able to show it to you. Oh, there we go. So this is a 2.5 liter four cylinder. It makes 182 horsepower, 176 pound feet of torque. Look at this, still some thought towards serviceability. They put the uh, oil filter right on top of the engine. A lot more powerful of course, but also much harder to work on. For example, trying to change those spark plugs somewhere way down there seems like quite the daunting task. Whereas on the old one, look how easy they are to get to. Bam, that's it. That's all there is to it. So even though some of the technology is the same from the horizontally opposed pistons, <laughs> most of it is, is all new. Now let's talk about the other thing that's similar between the two. I've got it right here in my pocket. Are you ready? They both use traditional blade style keys. Of course, the old one doesn't have any buttons on it. It says Subaru on it, but there's no lock or unlock. But even in 2020, this premium behind me still uses a good old fashioned key. Now let's take a look around back where these cars really matter because Subaru of course is known for being all wheel drive and they're known for having a ton of space. Let's check that out now. The old one is dimensionally tiny. It's 32 inches shorter than the new Outback. The exterior dimensions are actually smaller than a modern Mini, believe it or not. And I'm not talking Countryman, I'm talking two door hatchback Mini. But even still, massive trunk. Super low lift over height. This bench seat does fold flat. It's not quite as easy as a new one. It's a couple step procedure. You first lift the bottom cushion and then this actually folds down like that, but it will fold completely flat if you need it to. And it's just amazing how such a small car can have such a usable trunk. Now this is an interesting feature. This bag is actually, believe it or not, the reservoir for the rear wiper squirter. So you have to fill up the front one for the front wipers, the rear one for the rear wipers, and you can see where, yeah, there's nothing under there. <laughs> you can, sorry, Dad, my dad's behind the camera. He's too eager. You can see where the uh, squirter comes out there, and then your rear wiper. You also notice this little badge down here, four-wheel drive. The new one, of course, is known for having symmetrical all-wheel drive, but back in the day, it was a true four-wheel drive in that you could select between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive as you drive along. It's not automatic, but it is, it is an effective system. Now, the rear of the new one 
badge is in the same place here, but symmetrical all-wheel drive. Still on this premium model, no power lift gate, but when you lift it up, you see the amount of space. Seats fold completely flat as I have them here. This one has the, uh, the full weather mat. 32 inches longer, definitely shows in the trunk space, although I gotta say, it's amazing how much space they were able to cram in such a little vehicle. I love this too, and this new one they found a, a, a little spot to hold the, uh, the hideaway cargo area. Nice touch. Now, should we take a look at the interior? What do you think? I think that would be a good place to go next. Let me close the hood. Start with the old one. want to talk about this uh, both of these cars my dad behind the camera is like a mime today giving me instructions without talking because you won't be able to hear him but both of these cars have roof racks integrated roof racks this one if you look on the side has a, a, a vinyl wood panel on it because <laughs> of course it was the 70s it had to be vinyl I'm not sure this would hold a whole lot of weight it seems you know it seems a little bit flexy but it is a nice throwback touch now the amazing thing about the interior of the old Subaru is just how much room there is, once again, for such a tiny car. I've got enough headroom in this car, I've got enough legroom, and I can still carry like three full-size yaks behind me if I need to. Now, Subaru back in the day was highly innovative because in the 1970s, your typical car would have been some big lumbering sedan or a Volkswagen Beetle. And then if you lived in Colorado, you might buy a four-wheel drive, like a Scout or a CJ or a Bronco or a Blazer. But if you didn't want to get four miles to gallon, there wasn't a whole lot in terms of all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive cars. Actually, there was nothing until Subaru came along. And they took the concept of rugged four-wheel drive, combine it with the efficiency of a Volkswagen, and you had something really innovative. Now, this is a control to go between front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. That's all you got. You either had front-wheel drive for driving around every day, when you hit some snow, stick it in four-wheel drive. Now, a lot of you in the comments section are going to say, I'm wrong, because you remember very fondly the AMC Eagle. That didn't come out until several years after the launch of the four-wheel drive Subaru station wagon. So this beat it by a long shot. Manual transmission. This one has a four-speed manual transmission here. Super easy to drive. Really nice, light clutch. Down here, you'll notice the radio. I don't know if you can see that very well. A AM radio, that, that's all this, this car has. Uh, nice round steering wheel here, and pretty easy to use gauges, I must say. I would like to uh, start it up for you. Here we go. All right, are you ready to start it up? So, I put my other key back in my pocket so I don't lose it. Here's the key. You got a key slot here in the steering wheel. It does have a locking steering column, but foot on the clutch. You got that 70s seatbelt warning buzzer. And then, starts up immediately. It also backfires. Yes, it does backfire. You know what this car sounds like? It sounds like a Briggs & Stratton really wants to be a WRX when it grows up, but it's not quite there. So it doesn't have much noise, but it does have a nice little kind of boxer thrum. Right here is your uh, rear wiper control. Just flip that on and then push in to squirt. AC, believe it or not, this car does have AC, it doesn't work, but it does have it from the factory. And then, you know, just climate vents, big parcel shelf down here, and the cutest little glove box you will ever see. Uh, it's This car's in really nice condition for its age, so pretty much everything in here works other than the AC. Parking brake down here. Yeah, I love it. It's a miracle of packaging, it really is. Now let's check out the new one. All right, I say miracle of packaging. The back seat is pretty useless when I'm in my driving position here. It's <laughs> All right, it, good trunk space, but back seat room isn't great. The new one is obviously much nicer. The quality materials is much nicer. It's not blue plastic on everything, 
But I kind of feel like Subaru has kind of lost that innovative spirit. That Subaru, the 1978 DL, was one of the first of its kind. Innovative wagon, four-wheel drive, flat four, efficient, could go anywhere. The new Subaru, still flat four, still wagon, but not quite as, you know, groundbreaking. Now, should we start it up? Still have the key here. Still have a key slot. Foot on the brake. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now the interior of this new Subaru, the first thing you notice, transmission selector. Unfortunately, the only transmission available on the new Outback is the CVT, the continuously variable transmission. I say unfortunately because even though they're efficient, they don't provide very good performance off-road. Subaru fanboys will be screaming at me in the comment section below, but I'm sticking with it. CVTs just aren't as good off-road as a manual transmission. Of course, multifunction steering wheel here, buttons along both sides of the steering wheel, adaptive cruise control so it will maintain the distance um, from the car in front of you when you cruise along the highway. Still have, you know, gauges. This one, of course, has a tachometer. That, that is a nice improvement. But the big noticeable uh, thing you'll see on the inside of this car is a central screen. 11.6 inches, probably being washed out in the light here. But, uh, obviously, Sirius XM radio. It's got all sorts of phone connectivity functionality. Dual zone automatic climate control. Heated seats. And this isn't even a loaded one. This is just a premium, which is one above the base. Driver assistance technology using EyeSight here, so it will help lane keep assist, it will uh, be able to stop you in an emergency. I mean, it's a modern car, right? It's 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 very comfortable, well made, but it's it's like it's lost a little bit of the weird charm. That that old car just has so much quirkiness in it. This feels pretty normal, which is I think what consumers want nowadays. Uh, they don't want a car where they have to flick a lever to go into four-wheel drive, but you know that's what it is. There is, however, still some cool stuff in here. There is an X mode. X mode. X mode is the off-road setting on the uh, the new Subarus, which is supposed to program the throttle and the uh, traction control system for the best possible terrain. And there's even a car info page here, which will allow you to, if I can pull it up, here you go. It'll show you your steering angle, your four-wheel drive system, and your inclinometer when you're off-road. So, let's bring it outside and kind of close it up. Oh, back seat room. Thank you, Dad. Can you fold that up? Now you'll notice that this car has a pad in the back of it and that's because, full disclosure, um, uh, Subaru does not work with us, so we rented this car on Turo from a lovely lady named Claire. If you're in the Denver area, Go ahead and check her out because she was awesome in letting us use this vehicle. But rear seat legroom, huge. Look at that amount of space. That is an incredible improvement uh, over the old one, even with all the trunk space. Let's bring it around front and close it up. Obviously, the new one, heck of a lot safer. This is kind of a tin can, heck of a lot faster. But in my opinion, I do like the old one more just because it is so weird, so quirky, and so off-road worthy. Well, as always, this is Tommy with the Fastlane Classics. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new Subaru reviews.